last time I rushed through this project. And now I'm taking some time and reading your suggestions so we can finish this properly. Today we're going to look at your comments and finish this AMS filament dryer mod. At the end I'll show you how I should have done it from the beginning to save myself a lot of time, even though there's some reasons why it's kind of a bad idea. But if you haven't seen the first video, go ahead and check that one out in a new tab and then come back to this video. Here we go! The time has come to revisit the AMS dryer mod that I rushed through a few weeks ago. I refined the model a little bit and then read through the comments to see what direction I ought to go to finish this sucker off. So quick recap. Uh, a few weeks back I got a hold of one of these poly dryers from Polymaker because I genuinely liked the design of it and thought it was a cool idea. I especially liked the fact that the dryer base was kind of modular. And that got me thinking. If I can hook this dryer base up to the poly dryer box, I could hook it up to any box. But more importantly, I should be able to just hook it up to my AMS directly, right? So that was what I did. I drilled some silly holes in the front of my AMS, and I did this all two days before I was leaving for vacation. I rushed the project, but I was excited about the idea, and I wanted to develop it further to see how good it could really be. That brings us to now. You all commented. I sifted through them to see how we should proceed. From the beginning I knew that these holes would need some kind of gasket or something to help seal this mating surface. A lot of you mentioned it would have been much easier to model round holes instead of these teardrop shaped ones. Then I wouldn't have to dremel out these stupid teardrop shapes and I could have just used a hole saw. Now, I originally modeled the teardrop shape to make the ducting print a lot easier without the need for support material, but that doesn't mean the holes I drilled in the AMS needed to be the same shape. Like the comments also identified, I could just drill a hole super easy and then make a TPU adapter that would seal and then couple the two shapes together. Boom, problem solved. Good comment, good feedback, much better solution. You like that? I went ahead and modeled these adapters as well as some solid plugs. You'll see why we have the plugs at the end of the video. I'm using this Polymaker Orange 95A TPU. There's a link in the description if you want to get yourself some of this. This is what I've been using for this whole project. It prints like a dream on the Bamboo Lab machines, but that's because I don't like tuning anything, so it works out well. Although the TPU sticks to this PEI spring steel plate, like like nothing I've ever worked with. So glue stick next time. Keo. All right, so the plugs and adapters were modeled and printed. That problem was solved. Now I needed to move on to finding a way to drill a consistent hole in the front with the hole saw that was gonna be at the correct height so the ducting would sit properly. I modeled this jig to help figure out where I needed to drill everything to make sure stuff would line up correctly. This is also gonna make it super easy if you're trying to do this at home. So there will be a link to all the files in the description. If you've got a hole saw, you just put the center bit right in the cross hatches here and fire away, buddy. This will set the holes at the appropriate spacing relative to each other as well as the appropriate height for the ducting while it's sitting on the poly dryer. I moved on to fitting the plugs. This went fine, but that led me to my next issue I needed to solve. This ducting needed a little bit of revision. The ducting in the last video was made in the name of two very specific constraints. No time, no support material. Now that I have an appropriate amount of time, I decided I was gonna redesign this a little bit more thoughtfully. In order to have the plug sit vertically a little more naturally, the ducting was gonna have to be modified so it wasn't as angled at the outlet. I modified the start and end conditions of these lofts that made up the ducts. That allowed me to fine tune the shapes that they made, making it more suitable for what we're trying to accomplish this time around. With the ducting at a more suitable angle though, this leads to a huge problem. Huge problem. This thing's not going to print without the help of support material. I don't like support material. I don't like any support material. Ever. I especially don't like support material on models like ducting, where it's trying to support the inside of the ducting, as well as stuff that's overhanging on the outside. And I can already hear the comments. Just use support blockers and just paint your support and do this and do that. I don't want to do that either. I just don't want to mess with the slicer generated support stuff. So I decided I would model the support myself. This way I had fine control over 
exactly what part of the model it picked up, where it needed it the most, and there would be no extra support automatically generated. But more importantly, if you want to print this off at home, now you don't have to worry about setting up your support or using support blockers or doing any of that mess. You can just print it. With the shape changed and the support modeled begrudgingly, I moved on to the next upgrade slash revision. As you can see from the last duct, the PLA was super warped on the hot side of the dryer. That probably wasn't gonna be suitable long-term. I figured this was gonna happen. The comment section figured this was gonna happen. This came as a surprise to nobody. The PLA couldn't take the heat. I decided to print this revision in the ABS GF, the glass fiber stuff from Bamboo Labs. I would direct you to a link in the description to buy some of this. The bamboo has not gotten back to me on my request to set up such a link, so I don't know what to tell you. Hey, maybe go tag bamboo on like Instagram or TikTok or something and tell them you want me to have an affiliate link so I can be a real YouTuber. Anyway, I do really like this stuff. It prints pretty well. It's super rigid. I feel like it doesn't suffer from the same problems that ABS has in terms of warping and that sort of thing. It just generally prints very nicely. The glass fibers though they help with warping and that's cool. I think they also help with the overhangs too which is good because this kind of has some steep overhangs and would sort of be a good torture test. If this stuff could be printed out of this ABS glass fiber I'm sure PETG or ASA or ABS would probably print just fine as well even though the overhangs are a little bit treacherous. That said, the model did print pretty well. The surface finish was reasonable, the overhangs were reasonable, everything went pretty decent overall. Seven and a half out of ten probably. The design support that I made needed a little bit of a revision, but this was enough of a success to move forward. With the new ducting profile printed, I could see that the effort was worth it. The TPU gasket adapter pieces that I made actually settled a lot better now, and it seemed like this was going to work pretty well. Now is the time once again. Let's cut some more holes into the AMS. But first, I also wanted to make a provision for the hygrometer to mount up in there, so I wouldn't have to just leave it inside of the box. I was going to just trace out a rectangle and dremel that out, since these hygrometers already had these little tabs, like that's how they're meant to be mounted. It makes it pretty simple that way. The problem with doing that is I would have a similar situation as I did with the ducting the last time. There would still need to be some kind of gasket material to take up the slop in between my cut and the flat edge of the hygrometers. So making them their own adapter mount situation would make for a much cleaner install. It would also make it a lot easier when I drilled into the AMS again. They were a little bit too big for the other plug mount adapter situations that I just made. So we need to have a bigger circle for these ones. Checklist time. Inlet and outlet. Sealed. Check. Ducting profile adjusted. Check. Hygrometers. Mounted. Check. Surely this was it and we're done now, right? <laughs> of course not. We haven't even gotten to the most common comment from the first video, which was, how is the moisture going to escape once it's baked out of the filament? There's no desiccant to capture it, so where's it going to go? Does the poly dryer have an exhaust port on it? So as far as I've been able to work out, the poly dryer does not have an exhaust port on it. It has the hot side and the cold side, one that blows the hot air, one that circulates it back through the base, but it does not have an exhaust port dedicated to venting the moisture out of the system. So to your credit, comment section, no, there is nowhere for the moisture to go. It is trapped in there. So maybe we can make a, an exhaust port for it? The method that I wanted to try was a simple passive solution. I could go all fancy and like use an Arduino that's triggered by temperature or end of the drying cycle of a fan turn on or something, but I'm gonna start small. This idea is um, more of a one-way passive kind of rubber duckbill valve situation. And I decided I was just gonna model it directly into 
the space above the hygrometers in that plug, so I modeled that and printed a couple of them out. Still using my orange polymaker TPU, but this time glue stick, buddy. That made it a lot easier to remove. Imagine that. This model took a lot more revisions to get right, especially the integrated vent portion of it, but I think it was worth taking the time to do to give it its best opportunity to maybe function. I'm not certain that there's going to be enough positive pressure inside of the AMS to really open these valves or to evacuate moisture necessarily, but I wanted to give this a shot. Let me know in the comments section what you think about this. I'm sure you're going to anyway, but genuinely I would like to know. Now let's move on to testing. Uh, as for testing the exhaust function, that's going to be kind of difficult, but what we can check is the moisture and the temperature levels like we did last time. So finally, for the first time, I put all the plugs in, mounted up all of my goodies. We're going to see if my cutting and my printing and my modeling was all going to come together. No, no, nothing fit actually. The front adapter plugs were like impossible to get in there, especially when you had them on the ducting. And the hygrometer mounts were the wrong size completely because I think I used the wrong hole saw when I drilled the hole. Back to the CAD I went. I wanted to look at all these models again. I wanted to make the plugs thicker. That way they were easier to push into their spots without pushing through inside of the AMS. I also shelled them out because TPU being flexible wasn't quite flexible enough in this case when the model was fully constrained. So by shelling it out, it made a little bit less structure and it made it flexible enough to easily push in and out while maintaining the rigidity needed. With the modifications made and the models reprinted, this next test fit went off without any issues. Except for the issue that made me redesign it one last little time and then retest fit the model. Except that. Now before we dive into the last suggestion, I want to make sure that this iteration of the project was actually fully completed. I wanted to see it through to the end. Let's have a look and see if this box full of holes could actually keep anything dry. After leaving these three spools of TPU out in the humidity to bear the elements to soak up the moisture, I decided it was time to test this dryer by cooking that moisture out of them. I also threw in the ABS GF just for good measure. Basically, I wanted to run a dry cycle, measure the moisture and temperature, leave the stuff in there, see what the results were. With the ducting in place, the gaskets where they're supposed to be, everything nice and sealed. I feel like I have finally fully realized what I set out to do with this project a couple of weeks ago. You can find all the models linked in the description if you want to print some stuff out and do this exact setup at home because it works pretty well. It is a viable option. But let's talk about the numbers real quick. So the results were pretty good. We began the test with both hygrometers, reading at 62% humidity when the ambient temperature was 73 degrees. I ran a six hour dry cycle on the second power level, like the top little tag suggests for TPU and ABS. After consulting with the comments section once again, I felt like it'd be a good idea to let the system cool down a little bit since temperature affects humidity. So I let everything cool down back to ambient temperature before taking my humidity readings again. After the first round of drying, the hygrometers read 41% humidity when the ambient temperature was 73 degrees. With the humidity staying down after the temperature had normalized, I just wanted to verify the results a little bit more. I set the dryer off to do another six hour dry cycle at the second power level because right now it's trying to dry four rolls of filament instead of just one, which is what it would typically be geared for at that time frame at that power level. The temperature and the humidity rose as it began the drying cycle and then the humidity started coming down. And after the temperature settled back to ambient when it was done, the humidity was even lower than when it started. This brought us down to 37% humidity once it cooled back down to 72 degrees. But there's just one more comment that we need to address. There's one more thing that I could have done that would have saved me a lot of time and trouble and holes in my AMS. The last comment I need to address is a big one. Why don't you just put the dryer underneath? Or why don't you just use two dryers underneath?
guys, this is actually like a great idea. And I don't know why I hadn't considered it, but this is the idea that I landed on. And if you want to buy two of these poly dryers, this is what I recommend you do. If you just want to buy one the other way, totally good. And I totally get it. And it's been developed. But if you want to spend the money and get two of them, give this a shot. I quickly got myself another dryer box and base because you can't just get the base on its own without getting a box, unfortunately. But who can't use more dry boxes, I guess. That's a cool thing. I went to scope out some holes for the underside of the AMS before I began my cutting journey once again. This is actually when I became a little bit less excited about this idea. Um, the AMS has a lot of electronics up front here. If they were subject to the direct heat from the dryer, it might cause some issues, but generally it's probably not a good idea. After looking a little bit more and doing a little bit more thinking, I decided I was going to press on with this idea, but kind of do it at your own risk too. The poly dryer rear port is actually the one that blows the hot air in and the front one's the return. So though the enclosure would be all getting up to temperature, the hot air wouldn't be blowing directly onto the electronics like I had initially thought. I'll leave it up to you if it's a good idea or not. So I expertly traced the shapes onto the floor of the AMS. I cut enough holes to house two of these poly dryers. It looked bad, actually. It didn't look good. I did a bad job. That's right. I cut two holes in the box last time, but this time I cut eight on purpose. Again, doing the single dryer setup where it sits in front of the machine totally works. You don't have to go all silly like this, but it's an option. All of that said, I pressed on with testing this setup just to verify that we would still see a drop in the humidity as we continued to run dry cycles. Really, since there's so much filament inside of the box, it would probably need four dry cycles to get any kind of accurate readings. We had done two already, but then I had to move stuff around and there's holes in the bottom and stuff. The humidity went back up, so I was kind of starting over from square one. However, I did just finish the first dry cycle with both poly dryers running. Here's where we're at. 